boys and girls, Miss Karen here. Wait a minute. What's on my face? Huh. That's weird. I just woke up from a nap and all of a sudden there's paint on my face. Hmm. I wonder how it got there. Well, anyway, I just woke up from a nap and I had an idea of a project we could do together. A printmaking project inspired by a cool artist from Illinois, which is where we are in Illinois. Um, and she's a female artist and a contemporary artist. If you don't remember what contemporary means, it means an artist from about right now. Not an artist from a really long time ago. About 1950 to now. Um, I also need your help with something before we get into the art project and the art lesson. I have been looking for Painty. And I kind of wonder if he has something to do with this. I know he likes to paint. I haven't been able to find him for a couple weeks. And I was wondering if you could help me look for him. Can you help me do that? Okay. Thank you. Um, I think what we should do is we should call for him all at the same time. That way he's bound to hear at least one of us and come back. So I'm going to count to three and then let's say, Painty, where are you? All together. Will you do that with me? Okay, thank you. Okay, ready? <clears throat> Here we go. One, two, three. Painty, where are you? Hmm. Did he come? Did you see him? You saw him? Really? Where? Where did you see him? Up there? <gasps> Painty, you silly little artist, you. You trickster, you painted me while I was napping, didn't you? He's so silly. Well, I guess I better go wash my face and start to make some art. Come and join us. Let's start this lesson by learning about an artist from Illinois. Her name is Kathy Crawford. Can you say Kathy Crawford? Good job. Here she is in her studio with two of her artworks. Now, Kathy Crawford is uh, currently has a studio in Peoria. You might know where Peoria, Illinois is. But she's traveled all over the world and she's shown her artwork in three over 300 different exhibitions. She's also gotten a lot of awards for her amazing artwork. Here she is in her studio working on a print. Now, Kathy Crawford is a printmaker, so that means she uses a surface like wood or metal and puts ink on that surface and presses it onto a piece of paper, much like you would with a stamp. She uses a machine called a printing press. Here you can see the printing press where she takes her piece of wood that she's carved into and made really cool designs in, puts ink on that, puts a piece of paper on top, and then rolls it through the machine so she gets a nice, smooth, even image. Let's look at some more of her art. Now, Kathy Crawford often makes art of water. Do you see any water in this artwork? What else do you notice about this artwork? Yeah, there's a lot of water in this one. And there's also a big, beautiful goldfish that's orange and yellow right in the middle. This artwork is called Manzoku and it's of Kathy Crawford's water garden. This artwork is called Luna Sea. Do you have any guesses why it is called Luna Sea? The word Luna means moon. Do you see a moon in this artwork? Do you see any sea or water? What do you notice about the colors in this artwork? 
Kathy Crawford uses bright colors in her prints. This is the last artwork we will look at, and it is called Homage to Hokusai. Do you notice bright colors in this one as well? Now I don't know for certain, but I think this artwork is referencing a very famous print called The Great Wave by a Japanese artist named Hokusai, and it was made a very long time ago. If you have time, Google The Great Wave by Hokusai. It'll probably look familiar. All right, boys and girls, moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, whoever, let's get making. What you're gonna need is uh, some markers, preferably some washable markers, plastic bag, minus sandwich sized, yours can be bigger or smaller, that's fine, white paper, and some water and brushes. And of course, any friends that you wanna join. Now, we are gonna make a print using a plastic bag. Kathy Crawford doesn't use plastic bags. She uses wood that she carves into and puts ink on. Now, I don't have wood to carve into, so that's why we're using this. And I also don't have ink, so that's why we're using markers. Now, I do have some paint. So I'm gonna show you two versions of this project, one with markers and one with paint. Just because I know not everybody has paint at their house and really both ways are fun. All right, so what you're gonna do is first, you're going to color your marker on, color your plastic bag with some marker. And I just like to do interesting lines. You could draw a face or a person, but just know that the marker might move a little bit when you put it on your paper. So the face or the person or whatever you draw might get a little blurry. All right, once you have your design, however you want, and it's okay if you can't see it too good, we're gonna do a magic trick to make it show up. Set your plastic bag to the side and get your white piece of paper. Now the trickiest part of this is making your paper just the right amount of dampness or just the right amount of being wet. So what I'm gonna do is take my big paintbrush here, dip it in the water, and paint my piece of paper just so it gets kind of wet. Now to make it a little bit less wet, especially on the side I'm gonna print, I'm gonna tap some of that water off. That feels like it's just the right amount of wet. All right, now I'm gonna take my plastic bag or my plate, flip it over so the marker is down, put it on top of my paper, and give it just a little massage, not too much, and lift it up. Wow, so cool, I made a print. It's interesting to see where my, mar my marker stays put and where my marker moves or bleeds. My guess is right here it was a little bit wetter and right here it was a little bit drier. Hmm, interesting. Sometimes doing art is a lot like doing science. It's an experiment, and you don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but that's part of the fun. It's a surprise. All right, I think I'll put another print over on this side. So let me get my bag again. I'm gonna wipe this marker off just to make my bag a little bit drier. Marker doesn't really like coloring on wet surfaces. Sometimes it makes the marker break or not work anymore. So you wanna dry off your bag a little bit. All right, let me make some new lines here. And maybe I'll add another color this time. Cool. 
All right, let's see if the magic trick works on this side. Now my paper has gotten to dry a little bit, so I wonder if that's gonna make a difference. Hmm, let's see. Ooh, okay, cool, interesting. I noticed that the blue and the yellow kind of mix together a little bit and it looks a little green. Awesome. All right, let me show you a few that I have finished that I did uh, earlier today. So this is one that I layered uh, at least four times and you can see where it was wetter and where it was drier. I would like to now show you how to do it with paint. Here is an example of a print made with paint. I did four, five different prints on this one paper and some are what you call ghost prints. So I'll show you what kind, what that means. The type of paint I am using is this Crayola Washable Tempera. What's nice about this paint is it's super washable and it's also nice bright colors, which is usually tricky to get. Uh, it's tricky to get those two things together. So if you need, if you want to buy paint, I recommend this kind. All right. Now, this time I do not need my water and paintbrushes to get my paper wet. I just need it to paint my plastic bag. So here we go. I think I'll just do some interesting brush strokes, kind of like what I did with the marker. I like starting with my lighter colors and then moving towards my darker colors. So I think I'm just gonna do blue and purple on this one. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let me get my paper here. Again, I don't need to get it wet this time. This paint is already wet enough. All right, ready? I'm gonna flip it over. Oops, dripping a little, that's okay. And give it a gentle massage. Cool. I really like how these brush strokes show up on this paper and also how there's this kind of interesting marbling happening where some of the colors are mixing together. Now, a ghost print is where you take your plate that has some leftover ink or paint on it and you press it again. All right, let's see how this looks. Ooh, cool. Now, I might add one more thing right here, maybe a picture of something. Since the paint holds still a little bit more than the marker, I'm gonna play around with painting a picture this time. I'm gonna get rid of that uh, old paint, I don't want that anymore, and then I think I'll paint a, hmm, let's see. Mm. I'm gonna start, well, I made a blue and a purple print, so maybe I'll paint a, let's see. Press it on there. Sorry about that, my video got cut off. All right, I pressed down my black image here. Let's see how it looks when I pull it up. Ooh, cool. So interesting to see how that turned out. Thanks for watching, boys and girls. I hope you had fun making your prints today. I have two last ideas for you. First one is next time we might create some stamps using cardboard or other materials and stamp them on your prints. So hang on to your prints for a little bit longer. And if your print is done, then you can think of a title just like 
uh, Kathy Crawford does for her art. So I might call this one, hmm, Rainbow Sunset. Hmm. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you had fun. See you next time.